my my next kind of question around around this is that um would it be fair to say that then um, given a synthesis of what you're talking about with clinical metabolomics and what Aubrey de Grey and all of these other, um, of all of these um, rejuvenating to homeostatic, youthful homeostatic capacity, would it be fair to say that um, our synthesis of all of you guys in like the 2020s and beyond is basically going to be something like a, an, 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 an artificial general intelligence that has the entire medical corpus and all of the um, the 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 refer or the 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 reference pop, pop the reference population corpus, um, and that then takes in through sensors that are on my toilet and everywhere else um, that are going to be taking a live stream of all of those biometrics as my individual and then cross-referencing them with the reference population and then sending me um, interventions to continue having reju that youthful homeostatic capacity. That's, um, that's a utopian future, right? But okay. um, you must remember, Alan, that the reference range will be also dependent on your race and your geography. Yes. Right? yes. Uh, for example, we just did a show on, on, on population genetics when we were in China and um, Hu Feng Zhang was having that exact same um, issue with how there was only the European yes. data set. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's and, so and, and that's a problem also with uh, interpreting the genetics, the genes right now, right? Because their references are either Chinese or European or, uh, uh, or North American, right? So, so each country um, will need to develop its own reference ranges. That's so and, interesting. Wow. Yes. Every uh, country. Because every country. Wow. Every country. That's are, so interesting. And even yeah, well, separate, even tribes in those countries. Be, look, yeah, they yeah. eat. They, if you take a look, you know, what makes a culture? They well, we were just talking species. about the Philippines. Yeah. You were saying there's 76 dialects, right? Yes. Yeah. So then that means there's all of these different cult subcultures in the, yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the, the cuisine is regional, right? Yeah. Cuisine yeah. is regional. Cuisine you know, is regional. Uh, there's a region that, that uses a lot of uh, coconut milk. There is a, a region, you know, um, that uses lots of just totally spicy stuff. Yes. You know, so, so um, e even in those, you could wow. see already very bit. That's why in, and this is what I say, when you're dealing with health optimization, it has to be individualized. We can only do case reports for you. What is being demanded of us is case work across populations. Say, dude, we don't work with populations. We work with the population of, of uh, organisms that is you. You are the ecosystem that we work with. And therefore, what is good for you is not necessarily what's good for the next person, right? We just have a fair idea of what the body does and what the body needs because it's more or less uh, universal that, you know, you cannot synthesize vitamins and that's why they're called vitamins because if you take them in, right? There are certain essential, <laughs> there's certain essential uh, minerals that uh, have to be uh, taken in, right? Um, uh, and so on. And, and uh, we, know that, we know that about our make and model as the human body, right? And one of the biggest problems that we have is that the Megan model of the human body is intended for the uh, Paleolithic period, right? It's not intended for now. We have created a world that is, uh, th that where our bodies are actually unsuited for, right? Artificial lights, you know, um, and, uh, you know, uh, polluted air and, uh, you know, not exercising, we used to, 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 uh, to walk, to work in the fields and, and, and so on. And even before agriculture, we walked a lot because we were, we were nomadic, right? So, so would it, would it be fair of, to say something along the lines of, to continue our analogy that's, I think, really flourishing, flowering right now, would it, would it be like that the vehicle itself is us in that sense? And there's a make, there's a model, there's a yes. user, 
there's a year yes. or two. You said yes. the age was very important. And then that the older vehicles were had the, you know, the dashboards only had a couple variables on the, uh, yes. and yes. now they're having hundreds and we want to get that constant measurement. And the, in that, in that analogy, it would be like, you know, if you, if your vehicle is manufactured in the United States or in China or in South Africa or Germany or Kenya or wherever, it, it ends up being a, a unique to that yes. specific make um, for your vehicle. And you're going to eat those specific things, be exposed to those yes. certain cultural things, even yes. your language and, and all this type. Yeah, yeah. But um, from an evolutionary point of view, now we will shift from what you just said. Uh -huh. From an evolutionary point of view, right? We are actually, with the, the world that we have created is the world for Teslas, right? Gullwing, if you prefer those. Um, but our bodies, our make and model as human beings is a Ford Model T. Ah, okay. this is perfect. I That's see. Our, our body is a Ford, Ford Model T, I right? See. Yes. And, and the, the, the world that we have created is actually suited for a Tesla. Yeah, and, yeah. and so we're a brilliant species, right? We can, uh, what we're, we do. We have no, we have no, our Model Ts have no seat belts and we're, we're on, <laughs> uh, we're in the insane realm of the internet uh, with all of the, yes. yeah. And then, yep. and, and, you know, um, you know, uh, our bodies are not intended to eat Soylent, for example. Uh, <laughs> yeah, or all of the high fructose corn syrups and. Um, yes, yes. Yeah. So we, we are intended for that period. So. What do we do? So, so for me, it's, it's, it's really simple, right? Now we have some technology. So for example, for your artificial light, control your lighting system. There are lighting systems out there now that can simulate you know, a 12 hour you know, or, or, or a sunrise and sunset and so on yes, and so yes. forth, right? If you're staying indoors. Um, the softwares on the computers yeah, for like Flux yeah. and stuff like that are very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and then uh, you could, uh, uh, you know, that's the reason why you use supplements is because you know that, that you are not going to be eating foods rich in this and that. So, you know, what, when your tests show that you need them, you take them, right? Because you're getting deficiencies in them because your body is used to take, uh, taking them in food otherwise, you know, in, 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 in the olden times, in, in the Paleolithic times, right? Uh, so a lot of our make and model is made for that time. But we have created a world that is not suited for a Mika model anymore. So what do we do? You know, we respond <laughs> by, you know, having air, air, air filters and air cleaners at our house, right? Making sure that our, our home air exchanges are adequate, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Making sure that our, we still have the same basic needs. Like we need to go out to sunlight. If you cannot yeah. go out to sunlight, you know, like me, I suffer from seasonal affective disorder. Because I'm a tropical boy, I need really more sunlight. I have darker skin, yeah, right? Yeah. You, need, you need more um, higher levels of vitamin D. So what I do, I have a vitamin D lamp that is UVB. Interesting. And I expose myself to it. So you, you, you essentially uh, uh, compensate by using technologies that are available to you or um, um, things that we have invented, right? in order yeah. to compensate for it because there's no going back, right? I cannot bring you to a time when there was no electric bulb or no radio or no electricity. You know, yeah, that's not yeah. possible anymore. So why not make your, you know, retrofit your, your home to be EMF shielded, right? Um, uh, Interesting. You know, so, and that's, okay. that's the reason why, you know, uh, people say they, they're biohacking all sorts of things, right? This yeah. is a framework <clears throat> by which you can make you can hang all of your hacks. You could look yeah. at epigenetics, you know, uh, bioenergetics, uh, microbiota, uh, microbiota, mitochondria, uh, exposomics, chronobiology, evolutionary medicine, and you could hang all of your hacks in there yeah. in a logical way, right? There's a logic. Yes. Now you're not just saying, oh, there's, it's because they're saying it's good for me. Or if you want to help someone as a practitioner, say, Right, um, because I know that there will be less doctors interested in this, and there will be more practitioners who actually will be interested in doing this. Is now there's a logical way where you could hang all of your hacks. Oh, that belongs here, or that belongs here. Yes, here. yes. So yes. you're not 
you're not haphazard anymore with the way you do things, with the way you help your clients, right? So this I'm is doing this because X. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is this is super interesting on an on an economic perspective because we've been we've been rolling. I wanna I wanna hit still some um really interesting points. That was our that was kind of our most heavy section, um, which is the thesis of of an ethos of what um you care about and what all of these great leaders in the fields of biotechnology especially care about. Now- Are you sure I care about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanna know this, uh, we, we, we can end on this um, perspective or um, uh, on that, we can end that section on this specific perspective around that, which is, it's very interesting how the amount of money that is sort of spent on this, what like, what like people like Jessica Zitter and other people have called like this end of life conveyor belt in palliative care. Um, and like people just having, you know, dying preferences and being able to like spiritually connect on their way out or all this type of different type of stuff. But also what all of the problems that we have with um, heart disease and Alzheimer's and all these other in cancers and all these other problems that we have um, that there's so much money that we can quantify that is spent on the disease uh, biomarkers versus when we spend them on these um, medical health biomarkers, health biomarkers, multiomics, these health biomarkers. Yeah. And then, so what's interesting is that, so there's both a significant amount of economic cost that we decrease on that downstream end, but then we also spend more money on this upstream end as well. So there's actually, in a sense, there's a continuation of great economic um, flourishing. So it's like you would subscribe in a sense to maybe a $5 a month or 10 or $20 a month or whatever it is um, plan where your constant stream of biometrics is being fed up into that AGI corpus um, that is then le taking your individual and cross-referencing that with the population and providing you with, with intervention. And, but ultimately, ultimately what um, you said in one of your graphics, which I really liked a lot, which was that um, it's so simple in terms of these, you know, if you do think about it, like you're continuing the analogy, like you said, the Model T itself that is now in the Tesla world, um, like we are, that you can do basic things to very quickly ramp up your Model T to be closer to a Tesla, which are basically the most ancient wisdoms are, you've said, um, sleep well, eat well, hydrate well, breathe well, move well, sun well, ground well, relate well, love well. And if you do those things, you can very easily work your way into a healthier, 